Yeah. All right. Um, speaking of handicap matches, this was a much more true to the word handicapped match because Brie Bella had her hand tied behind her back. So uh, if that's not a handicap, I don't know what is. Uh, and she had to face off with Summer Ray while Nikki just kind of watched and paced and seethed from the top of the ramp. Yeah, the whole thing being, well, Bree, I was subjected to all this, so now you're going to have to be subjected to all of it. And yet, so Bri- does this mean now that since Bree is getting put through all the stuff that Nikki got put through, that now Nikki's going to magically forgive Bree because now they're even? No, of course not. But it's it, it, logically she should. And and speaking of logic, I mean, Bree keeps coming out with the wins in these challenges. Wouldn't it make more sense to them consistently putting the boots to Bree until she was just sick of it and she just, you know, lunged right after Nikki and we just settle this? Because Bree winning, again, it doesn't make me have any sympathy for her. And it just makes me less and less caring about this whole thing as time passes. And yeah, Nikki just scowls and, and nobody cares. Do you care? Nikki was just so angry. I know. And yeah, because Brie bested uh, a challenge that Nikki personally No, I don't, I don't think that is the reason, John. You know what I think the reason is? Because her and John Cena broke up on Total Divas. Did they? I think they did. I think their relationship's done. That's hilarious. But no, what I was going to say <laughs> is because Nikki is the victim. Oh, God. This whole thing. All right, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, I, I, this this whole thing with these two women. And I will say this, at least it got significantly less time this week. And I wish that I could really praise the WWE for that. But at the end of the day, you just know that the Bella segments only got cut because of the cancer segments. Right. Like... Does the WWE really think that spending 20 minutes every Monday night talking about how horrible breast cancer is is going to bring in more females to their audience? Yeah, right. Like, not only that, but it's not like females are the only ones that can get breast cancer. I I know somebody whose grandfather died from breast cancer, so it's not even just a woman thing. And, like, WWE's talking about how saving millions of women's lives, like, how is that not sexist on top of the fact that they're shilling and pandering to the highest degree? Uh, They don't don't give it nearly as much thought as we do, and, of course, that's part of the problem. (laughs) So, I I don't know. Just this whole thing. I'm I'm done with the Bellas. I want Nikki and Brie to have their blow-off match. Reconcile, don't reconcile, because either way, I'm just going to be looking in the other direction at AJ, Paige, and all the other NXT women that have uh, yet to come up, you know, like the Sasha Banks and whatnot. So, there you go. Pretty much just the Sasha Banks. Jeffrey, yeah, pretty much. Just, and yeah, Bailey's kind of turning a corner with me there with her recent stuff. So and Charlotte, I'll give some credit. Oh, because we all know the Divas Division needs a little flair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I cringe. <laughs> yes. I cringe more and more every time you use that joke, or should I say, reuse that joke? And I will never forget that promo ever. And you shouldn't, but that doesn't mean that you need to repeat it. I will. <laughs> I All right. So. All right. Up next, the Miz tried to apologize for his and his stunt doubles actions and or words last week. And Kane says that he's going to have a match with Sheamus tonight. And I pretty much told Ashton Miz is going to win that match. And then he's going to get a rematch for the United States championship at Hell in a Cell. So we'll see if my predictions, uh, voted out that way so yeah. yeah i mean for what it's worth john totally called this happening and and when i say this i mean what happened later on in the night with the miz beating sheamus but for now I, I i will take some credit because last week i said that moving forward we were going to get um who did i say it was going to be Ziggler cesaro, versus Ziggler cesaro that's right and they they were the third man in their respective tag teams tonight against each other and Sheamus versus Miz, and they had a match tonight, and the Miz won, so he has a championship match because he pinned the champion, so shouldn't that make him the champion? No, no, that just makes him the number one contender. Oh, okay, well, that's logic that I can follow. 
And, you know, I really don't think our mid-card's thin, but that's always how they determine contenders is, oh, you pin the champion, well, you get a title shot. Well, if I pin the champion, doesn't that make me better than the champion? Thus, I should take the title and become the new champion. <laughs> what? No, that was just a fluke. You need to prove that you can do it more than once, you fool. <laughs> exactly. What do you think this is? I'm sorry. So, yeah, this this segment just was pretty much telegraphing uh, things going forward. But, uh, but you know, I, I still enjoy Miz, Dow, and Miz in this game. So nothing against them. It's just, yeah, it was a fruit basket. What else are you going to say to it? If it's not being given to Chuck Taylor, I personally don't care. So Why not? <sighs> because it's not Ashley Remington, and we all know Ashley Remington is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Chikara is pretty amazing, although – Apparently, the, the the rumors that Ashley Remington might be the leader of Flood are starting to gain some momentum. That just makes it hilarious. <laughs> oh, uh, from from lovingly adored babyface to sadistic psycho heel that everybody loves to hate. I should have known that a man who looks at a referee and says, I break on one, my friend, was just too devious for words. You know what else is devious, John? <laughs> What's that? Using your wife as a shield, which is what happened in this next segment <laughs> in the match oh! between <laughs> Jack Swagger and Tyson Kidd. He did it again, right in the face, that segue. <laughs> Dude, that's your 30-second odd scene now. Can he make a segue out of the most ludicrous positions? And I'm really beginning to think you can. <laughs> that's like that's like that artist in high school that if you can give him anything, he just, oh my god, he turns it into a set of male genitalia to put it in the politically correct way. And, and yeah, that that's your thing. Can you make a segue out of any absurd segments? So there you go. <laughs> But um, I'm, not, I'm not joking, though. This is Swagger versus Kid. Yeah, and yes, yes. Kid and did, I, in fact, use Natalia as a human shield. Which, I mean, you know, look, Natalia complains on Total Divas. Oh, TJ, you know, you're such an awful husband, you know, spend some time. And then he tries to get her involved in his life, you know, his career in this match. And, and then she like, just gives him that soccer mom look like, oh, I'm not even mad at you. I'm just disappointed. And then she acts like he's the worst human being on the planet. And then he gets made to be the heel, even though she's the, the, the real heel in the relationship. I know, right? Finally! You know, I, I'm so glad you understand, because I'm just like, Natalia, what do you want? He tries getting you involved, and you push him away. And then he's distant listening to his iPod, which is certainly better than listening to your problems. And, and you complain. It's just, I, I don't get it. And I will say this on a more serious note. Tyson has climbed into my, uh, my top three now. It, it, top it's, three? It's a, Who are number one and two? Cesaro and Bray Wyatt. So it's Cesaro wow. and now Tyson. I I freaking love this gimmick. He is technically sound and his athleticism is insane. He really gets to shine on NXT, though I don't really know so much about that anymore. And he tapped out tonight. And yes, he tapped out tonight. Although, granted, it is totally Natalia's fault, but he still tapped out. Because she didn't give him the rope when he was reaching out, and now he probably has a hurt ankle. So thanks, Natalia. But yeah, and he even had to undo his boot and reveal that he wears lame white socks with gray tips. Really, Natalia? That's the taste that you buy for your husband? <laughs> I love how even when something isn't her fault, we find a way. Oh to... no, it's clearly her fault. She's the one that does the clothing shopping. Oh yeah, because didn't we see an episode of Total Divas where she was clearly in control of the finances, or she was yeah. chewing him out for doing something with their money? Like, yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> My last asshole comment before I end it, Dash, and we can move away from this segment. Oh, why is, would you stop? Is is that apparently the storyline on Total Divas is that these two may be headed for divorce, and I'm begging you, Tyson, sign those papers. Yeah, Tyson's clearly way, way too good for this. Get, get out of that dungeon lock of a marriage so that you can go and actually do things with your life. I don't even know about the lock part. I think it's just a dungeon of a marriage. <laughs> Oh, dude, it's just so bad. Like, yeah. let her keep the cat, too, because, you know, screw that, man. Just take the iPod and go. Um, but, yeah, look, again, in all seriousness, he does tap out. Am I shocked? Of course not. Disappointed? Yes, but that's heavily biased because I just said that Tyson Kidd's in my top three, so that comes purely from fandom. However, the real victory here, and I am being serious, Tyson Kidd was on Raw. That is a victory in my eyes. So yes. 
win or lose, it doesn't matter. He got TV time. And you know what? He did well with it with his heel personality. I do hope he gets pushed in the future because he does, again, have a personality now. I mean, he's a fag-dropping douchebag, and I love it. Um, but we'll see what happens. And, yeah, Natalia, you are still the worst. So there you go. Yeah. I, I mean, Tyson Kidd got TV time. But you know who else got TV time for the first time in a couple weeks, John? Who was that? Roman freaking Reigns had a freaking interview. And I mean, I know Natalia's awkward, but I don't know if there was anything on this episode of Raw more awkward. And this is on a Raw that includes random Today Show hosts and Joan London. I don't think anything on this Raw was more awkward than Roman Reigns pausing and waiting for the crowd to pop to no reaction whatsoever. (laughs) <laughs> you know, I mean, we, we've kept saying that Roman Reigns is going to be the torchbearer, and it's funny how he's emulated, you know, a uh, past torchbearer and his cousin, The Rock, by doing this whole thing via satellite. Yeah. So that, that was a great nod. Like, yeah, Rock, you watching me? I'm doing it too. Um, and yeah, it, it was. And the awful. deep irony here is that this was the one show that The Rock actually showed up to live. I know, right? I mean, it was just all up in your face. Um, but Too yeah. meta for me. I know, right? Um, but yeah, Roman really doesn't say much. He says, you know, it it, it sucks. I wish I could be uh, there with all you guys in New York. Wait for pop, wait for pop, got pop. And, you know, kicking all that ass. But he says, you know, if I concentrate, I work hard, I, I will recover. I will be back. And, uh, and you and- can believe that. Believe that and believe because apparently Reigns. believe that is his new catchphrase. Yeah. So nothing more to say than that. Do you want to move on? I can't wait for him to turn heel. <laughs> if he turns, well, everybody's got to turn heel eventually. So and well, consider, yeah. I mean, John Cena exists. Well, I mean, he started out as a heel, so I guess that was kind of a ride for that. Well, if that's the case, so did Roman Reigns. Oh, yeah. Well, then, see, he's never turning heel either. <laughs> oh, man. I really want him to turn heel, like, some point within the next year. Yeah, but our dreams don't matter. <sighs> he should have been the one to break up the shield, I'm telling you. <laughs> You're still lamenting over that, because you were saying that, too. Like, yeah, Roman Reigns should be the one, and yet it was Seth Rollins. <laughs> yeah, like, he felt like the third wheel. Like, Rollins <laughs> and Ambrose felt like total bros, and Reigns was just the third wheel. And it's so funny that Ambrose and Reigns kept their relationship intact because when they were teasing the initial cracks in the shield all that time back, it was Ambrose and uh, Reigns feeling the tension. And, like, yeah, it's, it's hilarious. Yeah. All right. Well, up next we had, uh, I guess you could say two third wheels fighting each other because it was El Torito versus the Mini Gator. And this was stupid. And the crowd even said, this is stupid, multiple times with in between each time because they chanted it. Do you see what I'm getting at here, John? The crowd chanted, this is stupid. Yeah. And you know what? That's the only response. And that's not it. They also chanted Derek Jeter at one point to express their disinterest. This crowd pretty much reviewed the match. I don't want to dignify it any further with any continued commentary. Do you want to just move on? 